months ago, I found myself driving down here to Manila. I'm from Baja. Down here to Manila to visit my daughter who lives down here. Now, I was passing through um, SETEX. So those who familiar with SETEX, if you go straight to SETEX, you'll end up in Subic, correct? And I had no plans of going there. I wanted to go to Manila. So I had to look out for, there's an exit right that says Manila and Lex. Okay, so take note. This is about past 12. It was past 12 midnight. I was hungry. Beside me was my wife, sleeping. And uh, I had to try to keep myself awake. So to try to keep myself awake, what do you do? Of course, you have to play music. And now, ladies and gentlemen, check this out. <laughs> Oh crap, did I just miss the exit? <laughs> oh my gosh, I think I missed the exit. I go, darling, darling, she's beside me. Uh, wake up, wake up! Did I just miss the end legs exit? And then parang nagpong ata siya. Yeah, what, what, what? I, uh, useless, go back to sleep. One thing I learned never ask a woman for directions, they have no idea where they are. <laughs> I knew you can react that way! I said, oh my gosh, it is the fault of corruption. <laughs> because of corruption, the sign was so small. How do you think the sign's in NLEX? It is like this small. It says NLEX Manila. I like in the States, it goes across the highway and it says like San Francisco. <laughs> Even a blind man can see it. And I hope because of corruption, there was not enough lights. It was so dark. If there was enough light, I would see that sign. But no. And I go, it's the fault of my wife because she slept on me. And she said, you know what, darling? We were leaving Baga. You know what, darling? I'll keep you company. I will be your navigator throughout the trip. I go, thank you, dear. As soon as you left the driveway, <laughs> useless. So, ini the ulo Because once you miss that NLEX exit, the next exit, I think, is about Porak. So, it's like driving 30 minutes away and then taking 30 minutes back. I go, oh my gosh, corruption, government, my wife. So I just had to drive. Right? Go, drive down. Then I got to have a far up exit. And I go, excuse me, miss. Uh, Where is Manila? And she goes, uh, you just passed it. I know. That's why I'm here. How do I get back? Because this is the ticket. You turn boil on the way back. You will see the Clark exit. And after the Clark exit, will be the Manila and Let's exit. Don't miss it. Yes. <laughs> so, I was driving again and I go, Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, I can't wait to get to Manila. And it's late already. But then again I said, Is there really anything that I can do about my current situation? Can I change the way I think about the situation? And I go, Well, can't do anything about it right now. So what do I do? Let's dance. <laughs> I like you! corruption, my wife, anybody else except me, to a positive perception or mindset of the situation where I am responsible for my mistakes. I am responsible, that's why I lost track of the place. 
for trying too much of my moves. And I said, so there's nothing you can do about it, just have fun. So perspective. I changed my perspective and I enjoyed the rest of the trip to Manila. Picture this. Rush hour, 5 to 7 p.m. along EDSA or perhaps Katipunan, C5. You're on your way home. <laughs> Things on your mind. Traffic. Oh, damn! But I could be doing something else. Another thought's like, oh, hungry. I can't wait to go home. Or perhaps I could be doing something better with my life. Now picture this. A vendor along EDSA or C5. Not Sagilida. We're talking on C5 itself or on EDSA. Thought in his mind, traffic, yes! This is gonna be a good day for sales. Catching Peso sign! And the slower the traffic for him, the better, because he gets to sell more of his wares. Feeling hungry, yes he is hungry too. And so is his family at home, who is patiently waiting for him to get home and bring them food. But he can't go home, not just yet. Not until he sells enough of his wares in order to be able to buy enough food for his family. So perception. We're looking at the same thing, but we look at it differently. For those of you who commute going home, to those of you who have cars, traffic is a nuisance, a waste of time. You could be doing something better with your life. For the vendor in the street, traffic is life itself. That is Arnel Abba on the left side. Beside him is Noy Hopson and Fred with Su. This is the Ironman competition that was held in Subic. Now beside Arnel Abba is Noy Hopson and Fred with Su, who are two of the most respected triathletes in the Philippines. Noy Hopson doesn't mind Fred with Su beside him. But look at the look at his face, looking at Arnel Abba. Looks like this, like, huh? What seems to be his handicap? Arnold Abba has a leg and a half. And matching the best triathlete, he is not running, but hopping right by the side of Noy Hopson. Do you think he perceives himself as a handicap? No. Efren Peña Florida. What was his perceived handicap? He grew up in Tondo. Poverty, and he was good. Do you think he considered himself a handicap? They say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm poor, there's nothing I can do. And we must admit, it. a lot of us will take a look at the people who are poor and say, ah, this person will not get anywhere in life. Did he think that way? He became the CNN Hero of the Year in the year 2009. Note, this was not a local search. This was on international search for somebody who they considered a hero. And what did he do in Tondo to help out? He created this thing like a tricycle and he put the blackboard and books. And he went around teaching the poor people, poor kids in Tondo. So, was poverty a handicap for him? No. Yes, that's me. Uh, if you're friends in Facebook, you can check this out. If you're wondering what that picture is up there that says me, I posted a I'm not sure if you know my daughter, but I posted a picture of her several years ago. And they were saying, ah, kamukha na mami yan. Hindi, kamukha ng daddy yan eh. So I posted a picture, so it's like a proof positive. Ito, yung kamukha ni Kylie. And that was me. What is my perceived handicap? Anybody? Let me give you a hint first. I'll give you a hint. I share the same handicap with the following people. Sir Isaac Newton, mathematician, astronomer, physicist. 
considered as one of the most influential scientists of all time. Plato, one of the most studied philosopher, student of uh, Socrates, and teacher to Aristotle. Vincent van Gogh, the most famous and influential figure in the history of Western art. Some of you may have seen that painting. Have you seen that? That's called Starry Starry Night. Ludwig van Beethoven, German composer, and he remains as one of the most famous and influential composer up to this very day. You guys know Marilyn Mono, right? Hollywood actress. Catherine Zeta-Jones, giveaway book. She was diagnosed first in 2009, and then 11, she entered herself voluntarily into rehab for 30 days. So, can anybody guess what my supposedly handicap is? Can you please find somebody? What is your name? Uh, Angelica Rivera. Come again. Angelica Rivera. Angelica Rivera. Angelica? Oh, Angelica. I love that name. That's my mother's name. Angelica, what do you think my disorder is? Handicap? What is it? Guess what? It's not baldness, huh? Because I know there's a lot of big foreheads, but it's not about this. No guess? Okay, let's move on. Somebody else, please? What is your name? Rhea. Rhea? I love that name. That's my mother's name. <laughs> so what do you think my disorder is, Rhea? I'm sorry, come again. <laughs> She's been sleeping the whole time. What do you think my disorder or disability is? My handicap is? Depression. Depression. Partly right. You're raising your hand. Okay, I think you know the answer. Um, bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder. Are you saying I'm crazy? <laughs> Are you aware what it is? I have a mental disorder. I was diagnosed bipolar 10 years ago. And I've been seeing a psychiatrist regularly for the last 10 years. And I've been under medication. What is bipolar? By means two. We have two extreme moods. We go from the mood of mania, where we feel like we're Superman, we can do anything. We have a million thoughts running through our mind, even when we try to sleep. At times, we don't even sleep for days. We can be very impulsive. We gamble impulsively, we shop impulsively. I know some people who have actually shopped themselves until Bolana Silatera. The other side of being bipolar is the depression side. The depression side is when you feel like you're dead. You feel you've lost the feeling to do anything. All the things you used to enjoy doing, you no longer do. Your sports, your hobbies. You don't feel like eating. You don't feel like going out, talking to people. Personally, I find myself in bed under a blanket in the fetal position for days and months at a time. And there's a certain kind of pain that we feel. And some people have described that as God created the greatest agony for man. That he loses his capacity to care for his loved ones, for his friends, his family, and more so for himself. It comes to the point at the point that the pain is so great that suicide is no longer an option. But the foregone conclusion. So, iba sa amin, di na namin iniisip, papakabate ba kami? Hindi. Patungo talaga doon. I describe it as parang nakabalot sa kumot ng kalungkutan. Everything is dark. You feel hopeless. That's why we have some people with similar disorders. Robin Williams, who hanged himself. Vincent van Gogh went to the middle of the field, shot himself. Marley Monroe overdosed, suicide, perpetuates. It's very difficult to find Filipinos who talk about mental disorder or bring it out because of the stigma. One of the few that I read about it. Her name's Helena Belmonte. Pretty, no?
In March 20 of 2014, Helena attended a party, socialite, with a boyfriend and a best friend. After the party, they went home to her place in Green Hills. They lived in a condominium on the 27th floor. They brought up Helena, put her in the room, because she had too much to drink, left her for 10 minutes. When they came back, she was gone. She jumped out of the 27th floor, fell, and died. It doesn't matter who you are, rich, poor, male, female, old, young, depression, a mental disorder can hit you. Some of you may say, ah, mahina yung character nila. They are weak character. They're not brave enough. They're weak. On the contrary, I believe people with a disorder of depression are not weak, but they have been strong for way too long. And everybody has a breaking point. If you think we're weak, who is he? That is Secretary Angelo Reyes. He was the Secretary of Defense in the year 2011. It was at the time of uh, Ramos. He was in charge of the security of the whole Philippines. He was a four-star general. He fought in Mindanao, MNLF, MILF, and Bay up North. Do you think he's a coward? Do you think he's a person of weak character? In 2011, he asked his driver to bring him to the cemetery because he wanted to visit the mom who was buried there. So the driver wait here. He walked to the tombstone of the mom, stood there, took his 45 caliber out of his holster, put it on his chest, shot himself, and died after suffering a depression for two months. So I don't think these people are weak. But did they consider it a handicap? A lot of these people are very talented. So, ang tanong ko ngayon sa inyo. Oh, no, going back to me first. Do I consider my having a disorder a handicap? No! I have managed or own more than five business establishments. I have over 200 employees, so I take it off. And I get paid to... Trish? Trish? Yes. Am I getting paid for this? Dinner lang Dinner lang <laughs> Sometimes I get paid. Sometimes I get paid with dinner. Yeah, that's fine. To talk in front of people like you. And some of you actually paid to listen to me talk. So, I don't know who's crazier. You paying to listen to somebody with me with a mental disorder? Or you? So but then again, it's not a handicap for me. So ang tanong ko sa inyo, ano ang inyong mga karamdaman o kapansanan na humahad lang para makamit nyo ang inyong mga panaginip? Do you have a disability, disorder, or disease that is keeping you from achieving your dreams, aspirations, or greatness? Is it something that's environmental? Or something that's uh, physical? Apollinaria Mabidi, Sublime Paralytic, leader, teacher, lawyer. Lost the, use of his, lost the use of his legs to polio when he was 20 years old. But did he consider himself a handicap? Was his perception, oh, I am polio, I'm useless, I will sit down in this rotunda whole chair and just let the revolution pass. Was that his perception? No. Is there excuse perhaps environmental? Poverty, very common. This is Senator Manny Villar. He grew up in one of the poorest, most congested slums of Manila, Tondo. And uh, he was the son of a fish vendor, Nanay Kurin. And at grade one, he had to stop going to school because they had to help the mom, Nanay Kurin, sell fish and shrimps in the Divisoria market. But look where he is right now. He's currently worth about $1.9 billion and he's ranked number 12 one of the Filipinos richest. So did he perceive his poverty, his situation, as a handicap? No. So again, I ask you, what disability do you have, a disorder, that is stopping you from achieving your dreams? Tell me what you have, and I can Google at least a dozen people with your exact disorder, disability, disease, 
plus more who have achieved their dreams and greatness in life. Could it be that your reason is also a yeah, mental disorder? The people who I shared with you earlier were people with mental disorders. But despite that, these people were, consin were considered geniuses of their fields. And there's a, they, they say there is a thin line between genius and insanity. I totally skipped the genius. I just hopped over to the insanity train. So I never got to that part. So, let me ask you again. What do you have? What is stopping you from achieving greatness in life? Do you still have any reason not to achieve greatness in life? Do you? No. I didn't think so either. Thank you.